Hi everyone, welcome to the Super Clash Spooky Cast, a podcast where we take a deep dive into the horror stories of Reddit and discuss the things that truly go bump in the night. My name is Trey, and I will be your guide to the strange and unexplainable this evening. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Trey, and today I'm joined by my co-hosts Connor and David. Uh, today Connor will be narrating our story. Go ahead, take it away, Connor. All right. Tonight's story comes from the subreddit Let's Not Meet and is from the user, well, this is weird, 20. Um, the title of the story is I Live Below a Cult Leader and I Fear I've Angered Her. I, female, 28, have lived in the same apartment for four years. My neighbors in the unit above me are a couple in their 30s who have lived there for about three years with no issues between us. During the past six months, I've noticed some changes in their behaviors. First, it was just a few days per week. I'd hear music with heavy bass accompanied by rhythmic jumping. I assume they bought an exercise bike or something, but sometimes the jumping gets so intense that it shakes my overhead light fixtures. The jumping routine has been escalating to the point that it takes place every day, normally between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. I also noticed that they call 1-800-JUNK and got rid of a lot of nice possessions. However, I figured none of this was my business, so I kept my observations to myself. About three weeks ago, everything escalated. Multiple times per week, on weekdays and during working hours, it sounds like they're hosting a mini Burning Man event in their apartment. The music is so loud and clear that it sounds as if I'm at a concert while I'm sitting in my living room. There's clearly a lot of people involved because the jumping and stomping shakes multiple light fixtures and cabinet. The music is a mix of new age, spiritual vibes, dance beats, and a male voiceover giving weird instructions like, rebrand yourself, surrender yourself, stomp stomp in response i've taken audio recordings on my phone and one video from the hallway during these events i still can't complain to the building but i wanted evidence in case it became a regular thing this week i've encountered a big problem a couple above me has a private patio which is directly above my bedroom i came home from a three-day trip out of town yesterday and my ceiling is legitimately collapsing in one corner big chunks of plaster had fallen to the ground and i saw a little water I immediately called my superintendent since I didn't want to be buried alive by ceiling rubble if it gives out. When he came to check it out, he was shocked and pissed. He said that the woman in the couple appears to be working with some people doing workshops or something. He can see their patio from his apartment window and has watched the group do these dancing, jumping, dirt rituals out there on a weekly basis. He said they all dance and jump to the music and then spread dirt along with something else he doesn't know what it is across the patio on a weekly basis. He believes that the dirt plus unknown substance combo is getting through the wooden cracks, absorbing water, and weighing down the ceiling. In order to fix the problem, my super said he could go talk to the woman, check out their patio, and ultimately hire a contractor to pull up the wood to scrape out whatever the hell is causing my ceiling to fall. I could hear them talking from my room, and the woman sounded distraught and defensive. When my super left, he called me and warned me that she might try to come down to my apartment and demand to see the damage, but don't let her in. This was a little concerning to me. Is she a threat? The damage is real. I wouldn't mind showing her. She started playing her music again, relatively loud, kind of like a warning shot. I mentioned the music jumping to the super and said I had audio recording. He started begging me to send the evidence to the front office. It sounded like he wants them evicted. I said, sure, okay. I hate to be a rat, but if I have to choose sides, I'll side with the building that dictates my annual rent price. He called me twice more that afternoon to confirm that I shared my evidence and I said yes. Shortly after everything went down, I left my apartment to run an errand. The woman was outside just standing on the sidewalk and stared at me the whole time as I walked by. I ignored her. This isn't my fault. Now today, I went to run another quick errand in the neighborhood. When I returned, the couple was standing on the sidewalk, both of them this time, followed me into the building and then waited until I was opening my apartment door to confront me. They were both wearing creepy fake smiles. The woman has a horse girl hair down to her waist and started interrogating me. They asked, is your ceiling really collapsing? When did it start? Do you think it was related to the recent rainfall? Because our patio is just fine. I was a little uncomfortable. Were they waiting for me outside? How did they know I even left the building? Why were they both standing there? I've literally never seen them together in their three years of living here. But I have nothing to to hide, so I confirm the damage is pretty bad. I just don't want it to fall during the winter. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but hopefully the work will be done quickly for everyone's sake. 
They seemed satisfied enough, so I said, have a good day and shut my door. I'm getting the sense that they're nervous about what the contractors will find when they tear open their patio. What the fuck is up with the dirt rituals? Who are these people she's working with? I don't know what they look like or why they're available to stomp around on weekdays. The repair work has started on both sides, but the contractors will come on Wednesday for the grand reveal of what's under the patio that's making my ceiling collapse. In the meantime, I feel like I need to be alert and keep my eyes out for those people, as well as the couple. It's unusual for me to see them in general, especially twice in two days. They seem scared and in denial of the problem. They also literally ambush me. Hopefully it's over soon. TLDR, my upstairs neighbors are hosting workshops with intense music, jumping, and dirt rituals. Now my bedroom ceiling is collapsing, feels like they're watching me, and they don't want us to find out what's weighing down my roof. Now, additionally, there's been an update to this story that I feel like I should share on this. The contractors came today and reported that there was, in fact, dirt and sludge visible below the neighbor's patio. However, thanks to the help of my internet sleuthing friend, I've gained a lot more insight into the realm that dwells above me. As one Redditor suggested, nice work, my neighbor is affiliated with multiple ecstatic dance communities, both international and local. The international group has planned events during which all cells of the organization host dance sessions simultaneously. It also has a YouTube channel that streams Psytrance music 24-7. I listened to a portion of it, and the female voiceover declared, You are becoming the game master. Meanwhile, the local group seems to be more exclusive and more radical in their mindset. One of the local groups, hosted by my neighbor's good friend, conducts a three-day event that costs upwards of $400 for admission. Participation is in all three days is mandatory. I get the impression that they all sleep in the studio space. And the event description mentions that it begins with a ritual. The last and darkest affiliation that I've confirmed via social media footprints is that my neighbors and a few members of the local communities are also involved with some compassionate death groups. There's no way for me to verify at this time if these affiliations overlap in a meaningful way, so I'll simply state the facts that I have evidence to prove. My super asked me about the jumping again when I saw him today. He remains eager to act. He agreed with my new game plan to wait for another large event to happen and then called him to check on my dishwasher so he can intervene. So for now, the ways in which the puzzle pieces of ecstatic dance, compassionate death, patio dirt rituals, and ceiling collapse connect will remain a mystery. I, you know, I just question why the super just doesn't evict them immediately. Like, they've already caused damage. Clearly they're pouring, like, soil on the floor, which is, like, dumb. <clears throat> so I'm like, why not just evict them? Just get them out of there. Yeah. Um, I know, I know, um, Connor, I don't think you've had any experience with, uh, living in an apartment, but I know, Trey, you have. Is this a common thing for neighbors to be weird, or is this, like, a, an isolated kind of thing? I it's mean... It's common for them to be loud. Yeah, like, I've... I've gotten lucky, um, you know, I've been renting for, God, what, probably like a decade now, um, and I haven't really had too many problems, um, knock on wood, uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, like the, the worst it's gotten, I think, is um, every once in a while at my old place, uh, the upstairs neighbors would like throw a party until like 1 30 in the morning or something like that but like even then like that's not super late so yeah was that when like I, weekend we, weekends when those parties yeah. would happen or oh, okay yeah, yeah it'd be like cool. saturday night into sunday morning so when i uh lived in a duplex for a while the neighbors that shared the wall with us um they would stay up all hours of the night every well almost every day of the week um chatting loudly laughing loudly and they also had what appeared to be like a three or four year old kid too and uh i complained about it multiple times nothing ever happened i ended up having to switch to our guest room as our master bedroom so that we could actually sleep at night when we lived there damn wow yeah. oh yeah i forgot about the duplex that you guys had for a long time but... eh, a couple years yeah it was a yeah. couple years yeah still significant period of time but uh yeah i that's that's one reason why I'm, I'm glad i moved out of my parents house and then directly into a house because uh you never hear i mean you occasionally hear stuff across the street but i mean I've you never know had to 
let's experience that. <clears throat> Thinking about this story, I don't think it's a malicious cult. I think it's one of those like silly hippie cults right, kind of yeah. thing. You know, like it's the ones that share the love. Yeah, <laughs> or like just like uh, <laughs> I know, like during COVID, there were uh, these like weird like cult party things that like popped up where people would go to like spread like anti-vaxxer shit like this seems like one of those things almost like same like mind space mm -hmm. yeah some like natural healing yeah right, goofiness yeah, yeah i don't I, I would find it incredibly annoying and <laughs> this person has way more patience than i would i would have freaking been nagging to have them evicted like every day if they were legitimately doing this all the time like that's insane to me well but, and also like why why would you host it in an apartment to begin with yeah like that doesn't make sense to me it was it was her week to do it <laughs> it's like Apparently. but i mean they're that happened every week <laughs> there's a so i know this is kind of a slight tangent but there's like a subset of people in this world that i think are like absolutely incapable of considering other people existing and i think these people are are like that like do they not put the puzzle pieces together of oh we're playing loud music we're stomping our feet and there are people living directly below us the the puzzle pieces do not connect or they just don't care they and just it's... don't give a shit. I mean, that's like whenever people are driving on the road. And actually, there's just a little bit of an example today. I was coming back home, grabbing, grabbing fast food from work, merging onto the highway. And someone was literally weaving between all the cars very fast. Like, they weren't even there. Like, they don't, just don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm in your way. Let me move aside so that way you can go along with your day. I definitely don't think this is like something that the the poster should be worried about per se these people no. i i don't get a vibe that they're like gonna take you out and sacrifice you in a, a I ritual mean, you say that but like they were waiting for him outside they followed him up to his apartment yeah like, they wanted they wanted proof of the damage that was supposedly there i mean if your house they're either gonna it, they're either gonna kidnap him and murder him or they're gonna like have a weird blow up uh and be a karen about it and be how like you know oh, i'm the victim <laughs> and it's just like are you though <laughs> the latter seems more likely to me yeah. <laughs> uh but even still like you know the, the, the karen that lives upstairs <laughs> just get him evicted i mean yeah. the i'm surprised that the landlord didn't already evict that's what i'm it. saying yeah. man like 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 if i did that's any enough. of that shit at my apartment my landlord would be like get the fuck out <laughs> Yeah, that's that's more than enough to to get kicked. Honestly, you could do half of that, and most mm -hmm. would be like, "You're being a fucking nuisance." Like, get out. like <laughs> the fact that it caused damage, like mm -hmm. to the yeah. point that the ceiling is like falling apart. You know, like that's justified enough to remove them. And the you're, they're clearly throwing dirt and mm -hmm. sludge type stuff on the floor, and it's like. You're destroying that apartment. Yeah. Probably I, structurally just from stomping on it constantly. Like Yeah, those I'm sure those floors aren't meant for constant stomping that and whatever whatever mud based material is in there. I mean, water gets in there, starts to rot the wood. I mean, I know that takes a while to rot wood, but I mean Yeah. The bugs in there and <clears throat> it just seems like a well, bunch of well, welcoming a whole host of problems if you're starting to introduce things to the woodwork that's not supposed to be there. So, mm -hmm. well, all right, <laughs> I think uh, that's going to do it for us tonight, guys. Uh, if you have any stories you'd like to submit yourself, you can do so via our email, which is scspookycast at gmail dot com. Uh, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all of our content. Uh, we've got merch out still. Um, We've got our uh, regular Super Clash podcast merch out, um, and then we still got our Spooky Cast merch out, um, which I think we're running just until uh, the end of October. Is that right, or are we gonna just keep it going? Uh, we might. We'll 
We might uh, take it on a little hiatus. Okay. So take it away for a bit and then find a, a new time to drop it in the future. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so go copy some merch while you still can. Um, other than that, we hope you guys have a safe and spooky night. And we will catch you guys on the next one.